Well, there you have it, folks. Fear. Raw, uncompromising, primordial fear. We call it Obamaphobia. It's a satiric political thing directed against Obama the politician, not Obama the man. I hope you understand that. Nevertheless, here we are, and we've all caught Obamaphobia. It's July 19th, 2012. Thank you for watching. If you're watching, and if you're not, you can go to hell. For various reasons, Americans have got the willies about Barack Obama. Harry's not talking about a full-blown psychological phobia, but about an intense and incredible anxiety about Barack Obama. For some people, it takes the form of, well, what the hell's he gonna do next? From the very get-go, no one knew what the guy was gonna do next. Oh, come on now. Did you know he was gonna renege on FISA? Did you know he was going to appoint nothing but neocons to his cabinet? Yeah, he had a snow, but not anymore. Does he think nobody else can jump on a tramp? And why doesn't he do any flips? Well, you know, Tim, Perry just wants to get the audience worked up, excited, and ready for another ineffable Perry Logan show. This one called Obamaphobia. Obamaphobia? Obamaphobia. Obamaphobia. You've got Obamaphobia. <laughs> what the hell was that? You can't even do a simple voiceover without having interruptions all the time on this show. You know, Perry, I think Perry means that for various reasons, Americans have got the willies about Barack Obama. The willies, Tim? Yeah, Jim. No, I'm Jim. You're Tim. Thanks, Jim. Think nothing of it, Tim. Perry's not talking about a full-blown psychological phobia, but about an intense and incredible anxiety about Barack Obama. For some people, it takes the form of, well, what the hell's he gonna do next? <laughs> well, hi. Hi. Uh, I, this is a show wherein I inform you that you have a psychological disease. <laughs> A pernicious. Oh, 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 I get somehow groovy. Uh, just a satiric thing here, but it seems to me that people have developed Obama phobia in just like three to four years. And I'm here to help you understand why you suffer. You probably suffer from this disorder. Well said, sir. Look, look. Obama phobia is a satiric thing, a satiric tool, if you will. Uh, and it emphasizes a growing anxiety about our president, you know? I mean, it mostly takes the form of what in God's name is this guy going to do next? Back in 2008, Obama snowed us, but from the very get-go, no one knew what the guy was going to do next. Oh, come on now. Did you know he was going to renege on FISA? Did you know he was going to appoint nothing but neocons to his cabinet? He had a snowed, but not anymore. Hello, it's July. Despite the record-breaking heat, 
You've got the chills because you've come down with Obama phobia. And you're thinking to yourself, what's the guy gonna do next? Who knew he'd quadruple drone attacks? Who knew he would kill an American citizen without benefit of trial? If you're not scared, you're not paying attention. And I know you're scared. It's the phobia. It's the, well, how shall I say, the general political revulsion with Barack Obama revulsion. would seem to have dilated again. That's right, Jim. Look at Perry spazzing around like that. But seriously, Tim, yeah, Jim, did you think Obama would renege on FISA? No. Did you think Obama would appoint nothing but worn out old neocons to his cabinet? No. Did you think Obama would like octuple drone attacks? No way. Did you think Obama would declare the right to kill any one of us? No, Tim. Why are you hounding me? We're just making a point here, Jim. We're explaining the origins of Obama phobia. Did you expect Obama to sell out single payer behind the scenes and sell out the public option? I know what you're talking about, Tim. Obama met secretly with Pharma and sold out the public option, which is what most people wanted. This in relation to Obamacare. Instead, we got a big fat giveaway to the insurance companies. It really sucks. Hence, the Obama phobia. I get it. It's uncertainty. And I'm here to tell you, you're filled with the raw fear as you realize in this election year, the Democratic alternative, a guy we love named Barack Obama is politically speaking, an exploding nova of terror. So oh, there you go. Barack Obama, from a political point of view, is rather like an exploding nova of terror. Or, if you will, one planetoid crashing into another planetoid. Just from the political perspective, you understand. But it's only taken three to four years to give us this obama -phobia. Obama phobia. Well, I, it's not like I really think I can sing or dance. Hey, well, that's not the topic here. Stop interrupting me. <laughs> well, my point would be that it's only taken uh, Barack Obama three going on four years. Uh, to instill a kind of a political fear, a kind of a political phobia, you see? It often takes the form, it, it, it certainly takes the form with me of, What the hell is the guy gonna do next? Next. Who knew Obama would extend the Bush tax cuts again? Who knew we would have escalated the war on terror in a notably and abhorrently murderous fashion? But really, really, who knew 
the, the whole uh, one of my things about Obama is you have to try to learn to expect the unexpected. And let's face it, you can you can talk about expecting the unexpected, but it's by definition impossible. And Obama is doing one unexpected thing after another, like octupling or sextupling drone attacks. Check it out. My God, Muslims all over the world are being blown to pieces. Their flesh literally ripped asunder. Oh, boy, command of Barack Obama, who, like an evil alien in a science fiction movie, picks and chooses who gets to die each day, thinking somehow thinking he has the right to kill any of us. He killed an American citizen without trial, without anything. He then killed his son. And don't give me any lip about saying Obama killed them. If Obama killed Osama bin Laden, he killed a 16-year-old kid. It's as simple as that. If Obama killed Osama bin Laden, which Obama's apologists are fond of saying, Obama took out Osama bin Laden. He killed him. Obama killed him. He did. It was Obama. He killed him. Blood, guts. Ah! Just doing a quick send up of some of Obama's apologists. You you may have heard them. They, they actually get start strutting around that Obama. Well, they say. What I'm saying is they say Obama killed o Osama bin Laden. All right. Well, if he did, then he also killed an American citizen without any due process. That's like strictly unconstitutional. It's more. It's unmagna cartable. It, it violates the very cornerstone of Western free free, civilized society. And uh, Obama takes on to himself the power, which, cackling to himself in his evil little den, he goes over the faces like mugshots of people that they think might be terrorists. And at one time, this included a 16-year-old kid, the son of the other American Obama killed. Killed the kid because they were mad at his father. Would you think about that as the Obama phobia runs like an electrical current up your spine, filling you with terror and horror? Ah! Obama phobia! Obama phobia! Obama phobia! You have it too! Oh, yeah. You have it too. You've got it, you see, because you just don't know what the guy is going to do next. Did you know that Obama would be sending unmanned aircraft into countries that we are not at war with? <laughs> Muslims all over the world, their bodies shredded. Their, their bodies shredded, shredded. This is not Obama derangement syndrome. This is evil in the form of a neocon foreign policy. A foreign policy which I must frankly admit to you gives Dick Cheney orgasm. Gives Dick Cheney volcanic orgasm. Jesus Christ! Ah! Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Perry Logan Show, the show that will tell it to you like it is. But like it or not, Barack Obama's foreign policy here on July 19th, 2012 gives Dick Cheney volcanic orgasm. Oh! Oh! This is Dick Cheney. Oh! Oh! I should be in jail. Oh! Oh! I'm here to confirm what Perry said. Obama's foreign policy gives me political orgasms a plenty. Oh! 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 no! I'm sinking back into the primordial ooze. The pain! The pain! Yeah.
It was a dark and stormy night. President Barack Obama sat alone in his dank and dismal and spitty little den, looking over mug shots of people, some of them American citizens, some of them 16-year-old kids who might be terrorists. And he thought, <laughs> this is Barack Obama. <laughs> drones, drones, send in the drones, kill, kill. <laughs> I don't see why people are afraid of me. This is Barack Obama. Watch this. I don't see why people are so afraid of me. Just because the national debt has increased more under my tenure than it did during the eight years of the George W. Bush presidency. Just because black teenage unemployment is a jaw-dropping 42.3%. My recommendation to you is don't check my record, okay? Just don't check my record. Watch my political ads and obey. Perry thinks, for what it's worth, you should vote for the progressive third party of your choice. The Greens would be peachy. The Greens would be peachy. I just thought I'd mention, you know, I am always saying, as our speech deficient president was just saying, a satiric version of a guy we love, uh, was that the uh, Greens do look peachy, you know what I'm saying? I mean, the uh, Greens are a good progressive third party to vote for. They have many advantages, the Greens. I am in no way connected to the Greens, but, <laughs> Greens would be peachy. I just wanted you to know. You know, it's like an endorsement. It's like a world-changing endorsement. I can feel it changing me. Do I look different? I sure feel different. If you consistently say one thing and do another, I think this induces a kind of uncertainty, a kind of a repulsion, a kind of a phobia. Are you okay? If you say one thing and do another, blatantly, and just keep coming up short of expectations or in opposition to expectations, you will experience a certain anxiety which we here at Perry Logan Enterprises <laughs> Hey, we here at Perry Logan Enterprises <laughs> like to call Obama phobia. How not a real political disorder to be sure so stop looking at me like that, all right? But come on, man, did you expect that Obama would be shredding not only the Constitution on which he is said to be an expert, but also shredding the Magna Carta? My God, Obama is shredding the Magna Carta. Get out of here. Ah! Here's Professor Perry Logan of the Sorbonne to explain Barack Obama's foreign policy. Hello. This is Professor Perry Logan of the Sorbonne to explain Barack Obama's foreign policy and why it gives the neocons volcanic orgasms. <laughs> that was not the real Professor Perry Logan of the Sorbonne. And by the way, I'm not a professor, okay? Aww. I'm not a professor. This is just shtick. <laughs> Don't rub it in. Stop bringing that up. Hmm. Yes, well, here in intricate detail is Barack Obama's foreign policy. 
One, accuse someone of being a terrorist. Two, kill him, okay? whistleblowers worse than all other presidents combined? No. Did you know that under Obama, we would codify indefinite detention into law? Codify indefinite detention into law? <laughs> Did you know that Obama would draw up a secret kill list of people, including American citizens, to assassinate without due process? To assassinate without due process? Why are you whispering? Because I'm so afraid. Did you know that Obama would proceed with warrantless wiretapping on Americans? Did I know he would proceed with warrantless wiretappings on Americans? No, I'm not that good, baby. <laughs> Did you know that Obama would wage an undeclared tone war on numerous Muslim countries, blowing the bodies of innocent Muslims apart, including innocent children and American citizens? No, man, are you trying to bring me down? Let's face it, we've all got Obamaphobia, and for very good reason. Did you foresee that Obama would preside over federal raids on medical marijuana dispensaries? Did I foresee that Obama would preside over federal raids on medical marijuana dispensaries? No. No. How then did I, Perry Richard Logan, see through Obama in the first place? See through Obama in the first place. You heard me. I see through Obama in the first place. How? Well, actually, my first tip-off were Obama's fans. Sorry. I wanted to see you. I uh, noticed that Obama's fans were stinkers. To, to politically speaking, you know, you know, hey, forget about Obama-phobia. I'm also afraid of Obama's fans. So, I'm afraid of Obama's fans a little bit, not because they bad, but because they mean. I'm sorry, they are mean. They're just playing the meanest Democrats I ever saw. And so uh, one of the things that's been going on with me, in addition to the growing, creeping, fearful Obama phobia, you know, the guy thinks he can, he can kill us. And the ability of the feds and the army, no less, to take us to, to just take us away, has recently been passed by a Congress, which was supposedly on our side. Oh, my friends, this is the truth. A horrible law, a nightmarish law. Hey, singing about a rotten law. Hey, this is a real thing about a real law. It's called the NDAA. It's July 19th, 2012, and I'm blowing the whistle on the NDAA. A rotten, horrible law, which is totally unconstitutional. It's that bad. It's that scary. Uh, <coughs> Love it when they just blow up like that, don't you? Okay, we are talking about a political, satiric political phobia. We're calling it Obama phobia. But in my personal case, in my personal experience, uh, before I even uh, had any knowledge of Obama, I, I kind of like noticed his fans were stinkers. 
He noticed his fans were stinkers. Sing along with me. I noticed his fans were stinkers. Stinkers in the sense that well, it, it was really, it's really weird. There's still a few around. Uh, they they kind of almost went extinct. Like the dodo. Like a bunch of little dodos. The Obamacrats. The Obots. Or as I like to call them, the O-Holes. Oh, the O-Holes went extinct. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. They went extinct. And they too are now, many of them, suffering from Obamaphobia. In the sense that they think to themselves, What, what the, the hell, hell is this guy gonna do next? Oh!